The Prepper Podcast, episode 13. Whether or not their president surprised. The American people would never vote for socialism. He said under the name of liberalism, the American people will adapt every fragment of the socialist program. Prepper Podcast is an up-to-date survival podcast based on military, wilderness, and modern-day survival and may be found at theprepperpodcast.com. I am Ken Jensen, and this is the podcast about everything survival. This is episode 13, and today I will explain a good way to reflect back, which includes writing this year's goals, uh, you know, 2014, and doing an end, a year in review for 2013. This episode is may be found at theprepperpodcast.com slash 013. And now for the housekeeping, I want you guys to uh, be able to connect to me uh, socially. So I would like for you to go to the Prepper po- For Facebook, I'd like for you to go to theprepperpodcast.com slash Facebook. That will take you to my Facebook page. If you go to theprepperpodcast.com slash Twitter, you can go to my Twitter profile and uh, you can socialize with me there. I am also on Google Plus at theprepperpodcast.com slash Google Plus. And um, I also have another thing that I look at. Uh, it's a Zello channel. If you don't know what Zello is, it's a lot like the next telephone where you push a button and you can talk kind of like a walkie talkie type thing on your smartphone. So if you go to theprepperpodcast.com slash Zello, you should be able to get to my Zello channel there, and uh, you can connect with me there. I uh, try my hardest to get on there. Sometimes I forget, but I try my hardest to get on there and um, and talk with the people that uh, show up. So uh, just, just stick around on there, and I will eventually get on there, and you'll be able to talk to me directly. Um, also... For all of you that would like to call in and leave me your comments and your questions, your concerns, and uh, how much you like or completely hate me, you can contact me at the Prepper Podcast call in line, which is 978 knows it. As in, he knows it. 978 knows it. Or you can call me at 978 566. 9748. That's that's just the number pad for uh, 978 knows it. Once again, that's 978 566 9748. Okay, um I know last time I told you guys that I had over 400 people listen and uh that's that was accurate at the time. Uh today I have looked and I had over 800 people over 800 people tuned in to my podcast on Christmas last time around. That's pretty cool. I want you guys to know that I take that very seriously. I understand that everybody is taking time out of their day to listen to what I have to say and uh, allowing me to speak into their lives about survival and about how you can take your survival, your preparations, and how you can take your life to the next level. So I just want you guys to understand or to know that I understand what an implication that is. And um, I really do take that seriously. I know lately my podcast episodes have been over the holidays and stuff like that uh, because I started this podcast at a um, midpoint in the year actually toward the end, and there are a lot of holidays near the end. So just so you guys know, I don't plan on having um, a million little side project podcasts and stuff throughout the year. But when there is a holiday, I try to do the holiday posts because what it allows me to do is it allows me to balance my life 
with uh, all of my preparations and my podcast and my business and everything else. So I will continue to do holiday posts, but it will only be when there's a holiday. And since we're coming up on the new year, or well, by the time you hear this, it will be the new year. Um, since it is the new year, there will be a lot fewer holiday posts, so you guys will get the uh, great content that you're used to getting from my previous episodes. Let's see, what did I do during the holidays? I just wanted to let you guys know real quick, I really didn't do a whole lot. We tried to keep our Christmas pretty small this year. Uh, We put up a really small tree, and we did gifts and stuff for our uh, children, and um, that, that, that was pretty much it on the home front. I went, uh, I did go rock climbing uh, the other day with a buddy of mine, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We went uh, to a cliff in Tennessee and climbed all around that sucker, and uh, I will tell you right now that I am not a rock climber. I mean, I have been told from many, uh, many climbers that I have like this natural ability to climb, well, here's something else that you have to understand. I'm not a small guy. I'm about 240 pounds. I am losing weight right now, um, but the thing is, is I'm not going to lose a lot of that weight because in my earlier years, I spent a lot of time weightlifting and building muscle. So the muscle mass is a lot of my weight. I'm not going to lose a lot of that. Um, So when I'm climbing on a cliff face, I'm climbing with 240 pounds, so if I can get all the way to the top, uh, I would imagine anybody should be able to. Um, There are some techniques that you need to understand, and what's really cool is uh, every time I go climbing, I realize how much I actually know about the sport just by learning all the knots and things like that for survival. Um... And it seeds a critical thinking in everyone. So whenever you're on that cliff face, you realize that it's very important for you to pay attention. And you actually have a way of thinking of things, if you're a survivalist, that just makes sense. And it just kind of flows right into rock climbing, which is really cool. Um, In rock climbing, there's another life lesson that, you know, sometimes... If you're on the face, you know, you have somebody on the ground uh, holding holding the rope. And um, there's another guy usually that's spotting you. And when I'm on the rock face, I welcome anybody to give me, um, you know, tell me, put my right hand here, put my left hand here, put my right foot over there, stretch out, that kind of thing. And the reason for that is because in life... You can you can step back, you can see the big picture, and you can see where you need to go. So that that's kind of a lesson for the new year. And, and I did not plan it this way. I promise you guys I didn't plan it this way. But it's a great segue into the, uh, the year in review that I'm going to be doing. But uh, you can step back, you can see the steps that you need to take to get where you want to go. Uh, and you can come up with a path. You can come up with a way to get there. So when I'm on the rock, I can't really see what my next hold is going to be, the next thing that I'm going to grab onto. But the guy that's on the ground looking from afar, he can see a lot of the things that I can't see. So I welcome them to tell me exactly you know, where I need to go, stuff like that, because they have the map right in front of them. And all I can see is the grabs that I have and the fact that my arms and shoulders are getting extremely exhausted. So, for stepping back and taking a big picture look at everything, getting a, a road map in our survival and things in, in our lives, then uh, we step back and we need to review where we've been and we need to look at where we're going. So that's what today's uh, is about. I'm going to talk about review, uh, year in review for 2013, and I'm going to talk about where I see myself going in 2014. So if you just want to listen up and we'll go through this real quick.
All right, so the first thing I want to tell you is I do not like resolutions. I actually despise resolutions. New Year's resolutions are a waste of time because 90-something percent of people just, they do not achieve the goals and their resolutions. And they're not even goals. It's just like, I will work out this year. Really? You're going to work out this year? Well, how are you going to do that? Are you going to get a gym membership? Are you going to run two miles every single day? Are you going to do 50 push-ups and 50 sit-ups every single day? Is that your goal? Oh, well, I don't really have a goal. I'm just going to, to work out more this year. Well, that's a New Year's resolution, and that's crap. And you're never going to achieve anything if that's all you do. So you need to have quantifiable goals. Okay, um... I actually have a really big goal list, and some people go against that, but but my goal list is almost like a to-do list. I will get what I can done. I will not, I probably will not achieve all of my goals, but I will be happy with what I do achieve because I have a goal list that I am, that I have set up, I have looked at, and I can see where I need to go and what I need to spend my time on next. So, uh, in, uh, in survival, in this community, uh, there are some that would see me as an expert. I am not an expert. I don't know how many times I have to say that. I know it's been a while since I've said it. I am not an expert. I am a student of survival. I have learned so much stuff from people that would not call themselves experts. Uh, it's, and, and it's not by accident that I know the stuff that I do. Just because I know some stuff doesn't make me an expert. But like I said, it's not by accident that I know this stuff. I mean, I have goal lists that I make. Uh, my family helps me, keeps me in check, and actually brings up good points that I don't even think about. And then you have all the other experts in the field. I, I listen to a lot of those. Um... And be honest, though, I've learned more stuff from the non-experts than from the experts. I've learned a lot of stuff from the people in this community that have contacted me on theprepperpodcast.com or on cleversurvivalist.com, which is my blog. I've, I've learned quite a bit. And um, one of the people I'm going to mention by name, Lies, um, I believe it's Lies, uh, she, she is chiming in on a lot of stuff and I really, I really value what she says because I hear her often. So if you want me to really pay attention to what you say, then it would be a good idea for you to start commenting on all of my podcast pages and stuff like that. Um, and I'll have something to kind of gauge your knowledge and stuff like that. And I always read the comments and I always, uh, you know, I always listen to what everybody has to say. So just go over there and comment as well. To uh, I'm really just trying to be real right now. Um, just because I post on a topic doesn't mean that I have done that topic. Uh, I started the podcast because I wanted to research things to learn and things to do. And this podcast is a way of forcing myself to actually do the research, to sit down, uh, stay up all night and learn something so that I can get up the next day, take the information that I have learned, and make a post about it. And then after the post, typically, I will try a hands-on version of what I posted. Um, I know I haven't been really great at posting pictures and videos of stuff that I've done, but, um, I will in the future, as I do things, try to post pictures and stuff like that so that people can see some of the things that I'm doing. Uh, let's see, where was I? I learned more in the last year than I have in an extremely long time in survival. Um, and most most of that is attributed to my blog and my podcast, me forcing myself to learn things. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. 
Um, maybe one of these days I will do a show over a lot of the podcasts and stuff that I listen to. And you would be surprised that not many of those are survival type podcasts. Um, a, a lot of those are business type podcasts and many of them from the same person. With all of this being said, it's time to go over the 2013 year in review. A lot of the fields that I talk about, I get, um, it's, it's kind of a base thing that I get from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I read that book a while back, and I believe in that book. I believe that it has really good things to tell people. Uh, I think that at this point in life, I am a little bit further than that book. Uh, that book has taught me a lot and got me to where I am now. But I don't know for sure that that, that book would be useful to me today just because it did its job. It taught me to the point where I didn't need it anymore. So I would highly recommend anybody who wants to balance their life and choose very good goals and stuff like that to go to Amazon. And maybe I'll set a link on the page. But go to Amazon and look up Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Now the subjects that I'm going to cover in this review, or that I cover in my review, not in this review that I'm doing with you guys, I cover spiritual, physical, mental, family, professional, business, and survival. Alright? Now, let me explain each of these a little bit further. Spiritual. You may or may not believe like I do, but you need to identify your spiritual belief, align your actions for what you believe, and work to improve your spiritual walk. I'm a Christian, so I choose to do what I can to help others when possible and to spend time in prayer. I choose not to judge others. I know many people have a sour taste for Christians, but that's because most Christians today are social Christians, whereas they have not the moral compass that you get from a true walk in faith. Now, that's just my opinion, and that is my explanation of spirituality. If you are Muslim, if you are atheist or agnostic, there is always something that you believe in. But one thing for sure, you need to believe that there is something greater than yourself or else what life is a waste. All right, moving on to physical. Your body is a temple. It houses your life. You can live in a really crappy temple that feels awful and is just a waste of space or you can choose a strong, fast, high stamina body. That, that's your choice. Um, and believe me, physical, that is definitely a survival thing. Um, uh, spiritual is too, believe it or not. 90% um, of people that you know survive in uh, wilderness survival scenarios, they attribute it to the fact that they didn't lose faith. Mental. There's a lot of Alzheimer's today. A lot of people have it because they're becoming my word, mentally flaccid. Uh, all they do is watch freaking YouTube videos about cats meowing and stuff and and dogs jumping on things and I, I be honest with you and freaking Justin Bieber videos and and Miley Cyrus and all this other crap when YouTube is a very good source of learning things. Everybody has become mentally flaccid because they just don't learn things anymore. It's all about entertainment, and none of it's about learning. When you can get both in one video. Now, YouTube's not the only thing I'm thinking about. I'm talking about everything. Everything's about entertainment. Nothing is about actually learning and making your life better. Why do you think people, back in the day, a while back, actually knew so much stuff? Their days were full of learning new things and sharpening what they already knew. Because survival depends on, you know, all of that stuff, that's what they had to do 
in order to survive because they weren't like us. They didn't have a grocery store two seconds away that they could go and get their food. They had to survive. They had to learn how to do everything for themselves. They had to be independent, and that is what a survivalist or a prepper does. It's been proven that an active mind lasts longer than an inactive one. There's a reason why when people retire and they stop working, everything goes downhill, and that's mentally and physically. All right, so you need to keep your mind active throughout life or else it's going to fail you. Number four is family. This is the one that I have a very hard time with, believe it or not. I know that on my podcast, I say it's family, 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 family. But it's actually very hard for me to do all the things that I do and balance it with family time. Because I always feel that I'm not doing something productive when I'm just sitting around with the wife and kids. And that's the problem is, is I'm not doing nothing when I'm with them. And if I felt, and, and I do this a lot when I feel like I'm doing nothing, then it's a good point for me to go somewhere, go out with them, maybe camping or something or, or just for a walk. And now I'm spending time with them and I'm doing something a little physical. So it's um, killing two birds with one stone. That's actually a permaculture principle um, to, to uh, stack your uh, uses. Like, so it's called function stacking is what it's called in permaculture. So you do one thing and it gives you multiple functions. But lay, layman's terms, killing two birds with one stone. Um, it sometimes, I mean, I get really, really tired and it starts to feel like a chore a little bit. I fight it because when I do it, our relationships grow. And it's less of a chore. It's always fun after I start, but it's just hard to get the start. I try to spend the necessary time with my children and my wife, one-on-one -on -one and together. Um, I don't do this as well as I want to, but I do it better than some. And like I said, I, I told you guys, I try to be real in this podcast. Professional. I may have a business, but my livelihood is my job. I want to do the best job that I can and work to develop myself to be a more valuable asset to my company. Since I have been working to do better, things have gotten better there for me. They've gotten better there for me by a long shot. Um, and I will continue to make myself better for my company because... They have done me right, and I will always try to do them right. But on the business front, that's a big part of my plan for financial independence. That's another arrow in the quiver, another way for me to, to survive. I want to grow the business to be able to support my family as my sole income, but I do balance it well not to hinder my job performance because my job performance is feeding us right now. Growing a business is one of the things I like to say to people as a financial prep. It's an investment in yourself. So if you're a lazy bum, you're investing in crap. But if you are someone that likes to get up and get things done, then an investment in self is always a good investment. And last but not least, the whole reason why you guys listen to my podcast is survival. Military wilderness and modern day survival. I work to be better at all of them. If you read my blog or listen to my podcast, you already know my views on survival, my views on improvement, improving self-reliance and self-sufficiency. So I shouldn't really have to say a whole lot more. Now, I'm only going to go through the business and survival stuff because I don't have time to go through all that stuff. I'm already up to 20 minutes. I'm only going to go through the business and survival because I believe that business is part of survival. So remember, failure is success. It's extremely important that you understand this. Every good business person understands that failure leads to success. If you fail 
enough times and keep going, eventually you will get the success that you ask for. The reason why they believe that failure is success is because from failure, you learn. Therefore, when you learn, you win. All right? As you learn, you know what mistakes to make and what mistakes or what mistakes not to make. And that can get you to the success that you want so badly. I'm not going to analyze everything that I'm going over. Okay? I'm really just doing this to be transparent and to, and to get my stuff out there where I can be held accountable. So what I would normally do is review last year's goals and did I meet those goals? But since I didn't have my blog back then, I'm just going to go over my accomplishments. And then next year, I'm going to go over this year's goals and did I accomplish those goals. So right now, I'm going to do a review. And here in a minute, I'm going to give you my goals for 2014. My review of those subjects for 2013. All right, first I'm going to go over survival. All right, in survival, under food, the first thing, copy canning. I'm not done with copy canning, but I worked on it, and I have a substantial stockpile. I created can stackers, which uh, are PVC pipes, like 4-inch PVC pipes um, that you can throw cans in and they're at an angle. It might, it may be a post, a survival post in the future. We made water kefir. That's probiotics. Um, kefir tastes awful, but water kefir, it smells like a very mild apple cider vinegar, but it almost tastes like soda. Like, uh, if you add a little vanilla to it, it almost tastes like cream soda. It's, it's pretty cool. And you can add it to your water, you can add it to anything, and you won't be able to taste it. And you're getting a lot of probiotics. I failed miserably at a garden this year. I blame the late start, but we did still produce some. I mean, I got a really late start, like a month or two, because um, we had a lot of things going crazy at work. Uh, this year, I should be able to start on time. Um, so although we did produce some... It was still a failure for me, but like I said, that doesn't make me mad. I don't feel like a failure because anytime I fail at something, I learn something and I succeed. Water. We worked on on our backup water storage in soda bottles. I know I've posted about this. We're not done with that, but we're sitting pretty good. And we have uh, quite a stockpile of water purification tablets. My mouth is starting to get dry, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this podcast so that I can get a little drink of tea or something, and uh, I'll be right back, guys, okay? And we'll pick up at shelter. All right, so I'm back. Under shelter, um, one thing that we did was we got new hammocks for everybody in the family. Uh, it's the Grand Trucks hybrid hammocks that, uh, that we bought. Uh, we got new tents for... Um, for me, I got a new tent and then we got one, like mine's a hiking tent. And then we got one for the whole family and we got a storm shelter. I don't remember if we got the storm shelter before this year or right at the turn of the year, but, um, I'm not really going to, uh, worry about the details, but we did get a storm shelter. Um, so it may have been this last year. I'm just going to add it to the list. And I also learned some uh, primitive shelter constructions. So it's always good to have primitive knowledge. That way, if you're ever in a situation in which you have to rely on that knowledge, it's there. I mean, that's, isn't that kind of what we do? We survive when things get tough. All right, so energy. Um, I learned a primitive fire building technique, and I practiced it. I uh, built a solar-powered battery backup system for the storm shelter. So it's a battery backup system. It gets charged through a solar charger on a solar panel. Okay, so the solar panels 
charge the batteries, and then the batteries run inverters so that I can have lighting and stuff like that inside. Uh, with security, we acquired some firearms, and it is none of your business what firearms I have. I'm not going to tell you what firearms I have. It's not important. You know, um, we may or may not have some that are listed. We may or may not, or we may. Uh, let me start over. We may or may not have some that are or are not listed. I know for a fact that we have a shotgun that is listed. So, we acquired some firearms. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Um, other things. I, I didn't really do anything with uh, sanitation or medical I mean, I did get a couple things for, like, first aid kits and stuff like that, but I didn't really do a lot, n enough that's noteworthy anyways. All right, um, I made other, um, I did other things that were survival-related, but I couldn't really place them well into a category. So this is that miscellaneous category. I made several paracord bracelets. You know, the really cool ones that you buy for like 15 or 20 bucks. Well, I know how to make those now, and I make them for like 10 cents or whatever. I, it's, it's really cheap to make it. I've made the paracord belt. And, uh, you know, I posted a video about the paracord belt, and I showed you in the paracord belt video a bracelet that I have made. I bought camping supplies. I camped with the children, which, well, like I was saying earlier, that doubles as family. Permaculture says to stack your functions or stack your benefits. And uh, learned extra ways of compass-free orienteering. You know, things like uh, the Southern Cross. I had no idea about the Southern Cross. I'm not in the Southern Hemisphere, so it does me no good, but that's one of the few, you know, one of the things that I learned. And um, if you open up, Google's got a sky, a Google Sky Map or whatever, you can see the Southern Cross uh, below the horizon and how it relates to the, the Southern Magnetic Pole. It's actually a pretty cool thing to look at. Uh, po I plotted the contour of my land to start doing my hoogle beds i started building my fitness with uh, mountain biking and and working out and stuff like that and i started a business for sustainability i started i, I started uh saving a cash backup all right um i believe in precious metals and stuff like that but I also believe in the Dave Ramsey principle of having a cash backup. So right now, I'm sa I have been saving a backup supply of cash, and it is not in one location. I do know all the locations, but it, none of the money is in one location, just in case. And then I created my 72-hour bag or my bug-out bag. So I could just go ahead and do business for 2013, but I'm going to move on and I'm going to do survival goals for 2014 and then I'll come back to the business. So I'm not going to explain these goals a whole lot. I just want to go through them real quick. Survival under food. I want to make different beers. I've already started to learn it. I want to make beers. If you want me to start doing a beer review, I can start doing that because I am a beer drinker. Just, I, I'm kind of what you would call a beer snob. I like a good beer. Uh, I will make biltong, jerky, which I've made jerky before, but a different way. Um, I'm going to go hunting this year again. It's been a while since I've been hunting. And the reason for that is just because of moving and stuff like that. So if you're in West Tennessee, look me up. You know my email address. And if not, just look on my website at theprepperpodcast.com. You can get a hold of me. If you're in West Tennessee, look me up during the next hunting season, and we'll, uh, we'll take a trip. I will make yogurt. I will plant some fruit trees. 
I will do another garden. And I will can some vegetables or some meat. I'm going to buy a pressure canner. I have a goal of 50, so like 50 two liter or three liter soda bottles of water. And uh, I also do the really big apple juice bottles and orange juice bottles and stuff like that. Anything that'll take acid and it's pretty strong plastic, I do. I do not do milk jugs. I will build at least one more rain catchment. So I'm thinking about building a rain catchment off of my shop in the back and make that go into a drum. And I will get a Berkey water filter. Under shelter. My goal is a sleeping bag for each family member, an electric blanket for each family member, a tent for each member, and this is like a hiking tent for each family member, one, build one primitive shelter with my family, not just me, but my family as well, and work on my home efficiency. I know that one's not a solid thing, but... That's a whole nother category in itself. And that probably should be under energy. Under energy. I want to learn another primitive fire building technique beyond what I know. Get sun to dollars and build a solar heater. Sun to dollars is a, um, is a book by a good friend of mine. I want to research and maybe build a solar air conditioner. So from sun to dollars, I can do the solar heater. That's easy. But there are ways of creating a miniature window unit from solar for air conditioning. It's a lot harder to do, though. So that will be one of the last things that I do. I want to buy a new generator. I want to get a propane heater. A couple of them actually window jam or I'm in sorry I'm in security now I want to do window jams these are just pieces of wood that are attached to the window it's real easy to do so window jams uh, I'm gonna try some 3m window screens to see if it works um, they're supposed to raise the efficiency in your home and get rid of the ability for those windows to break so I'm gonna try it on some of the most dominant windows and just see how that thing works uh, I want to buy more ammo I want to get a scope for one of my firearms I want to get my wife a uh, I would like to get my wife a nine millimeter or something like that so that she can carry it with her through town and um, with that being said, she and I both need to get our concealed carry permits. And we're going to try to do that this year. In sanitation, I don't plan on doing a whole lot. Um, but I am going to try to come up with a plan or research some more sanitation methods for us. Because sanitation is bad in a survival situation. It, it can make or break your plan. Medical. I want to get a home first aid kit. Now, this isn't just like a tiny kit with some band-aids and stuff. It's going to be a Rubbermaid tub full of medical equipment. Things to do stitching, um, things to do uh, like basic shots and stuff like that. And with that, medical knowledge must be acquired. <laughs> I'm not going to let somebody who doesn't know how to use something just be able to use it. Uh, you know, I'd hate for them to do something wrong. Um, but the more invasive stuff will be available. It's just going to be hard for the children to get to without our showing, you know, our giving it to them. So that's it. We're going to keep it out of their reach. How about that? I have already done research on tinctures and I am going to make a medicinal tincture. Uh, it's a pretty small goal, but once I've made one, the other ones will be real quick to make. Now, I've already done a lot of uh, I've already done a lot of recipes on tinctures, so I'll be making some of those. 
And in order to get the first aid kit and stuff like that set up, we will need to make a list of all the medicines that we need, the medications. Um, my wife needs some. I don't. I don't take medications, at least at the moment, and I hope it stays that way. Now the miscellaneous stuff. I want to get the ham license for ham radios. I will be building the 72-hour bug-out bag for my wife. And I am going to orient here, or orient, I don't know how you would say it, an orienteering course uh, in Tennessee. I'm not going to say which one, but once again, if somebody would like to do that kind of thing, you can hit me up at theprepperpodcast.com. I will achieve the 1000 cash backup fund which I'm already on my way. And we have a very small amount of credit card debt, which is very, very small compared to a lot of (laughs) the U.S., the average family or whatever. Uh, We don't have very far to go. I will continue to work on the business. I will get a distiller. And uh, that is for like, um, you know, that's for vodkas and and that kind of stuff uh and an ammo reloader so those are the goals for 2014 there's a lot of them and that's just survival that's not business and actually believe it or not guys right now business is part of my survival stuff so business actually kind of trumps a lot of the survival stuff on my list Although, you know, I do work, obviously, you heard my list for 2013. I do work continuously on my survival stuff. But, um, you know, with that, business is part of my survival. And it's a way for me to get financially independent and make everything work out better. So, as far as business goes for 2013, this is the review business social and email i created the social pages to connect with you many of which i already spoke of in the very beginning i created many videos that you can find on youtube i began connecting on google plus and twitter even though i'm not a big fan of those services it's okay because i am a big fan of the people in this community and i really like to talk to you guys so However you want to connect with me is fine. I will connect with you that way. I set up an email opt-in. This is how you sign up for personal emails from me. You you sign up at theprepperpodcast.com or cleversurvivalist.com, both of which are different email lists. Okay. Um, okay. Under the organization, not as in the company, but organization, as in being organized. Uh, I started using IQTEL, which is the getting things done principle, and it's a project management software online, and it's free. I set up a business bank account for tracking all of my expenses. Under web improvements, tracking, and SEO, which is search engine optimization, I created cleversurvivalist.com, then I created theprepperpodcast.com. Uh, lots of hidden stuff with my websites. I mean, a lot of hidden stuff with the websites. I've had it crash on me and stuff. And there's a lot to deal with when it comes to a website. You'd be surprised. Um, but I know anybody who's been there from the beginning saw the very beginning site and saw it now. And it's a completely different thing. And. I actually would like feedback from you guys to let me know if it's been a big improvement if you enjoy the websites now. I created a backup system on my website. Once again, kind of following that prepper situation, what if something fails? Well, I've got backups that are emailed to me and stuff, and I have all those files just sitting there just waiting to go if, you know, somebody was to hack into my site, which I'm not inviting anybody to do so. (laughs) But if somebody does that, then, you know, I have something to revert back to. Uh, I began satellite sites for search engine optimization. You don't need to know what that is. Um, Google Analytics so I can analyze the um, subjects that I am posting that people are most interested in. 
Woopra, the same thing as Google, Google Analytics. Under podcasts and posts, I went to a new format. Instead of five days a week of posts, I went to two posts a week and one podcast a week. It was an awesome decision because I find myself with podcasting taking up a lot of time. Uh, I added additional ways for people to join my podcast. If you're not listening to the Prepper Podcast, you should be. Because you can get it on iTunes, you can get it on Stitcher, you can get it on PodPress, you can get it on a lot of different places. Uh, Under income generating, I wrote a book about bees. So far, this is my only source of income from the website right now. And it's not a very good source of income because this is also a book that I give away for free for people who opt into my email. I have actually had money paid to me for the sale of my book and and stuff like that, um, that's what makes it a business, not a hobby. I do have money paid to me. Is the business um, holding itself up? Absolutely not. But you know, you got to grow, and it's a slow, methodical way. And I'm I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, and I'm working real hard. So it'll get there eventually. I've been looking into an assistant. Uh, researching the security and things like that. Uh, I think that there's some pretty cool programs out there that allow me to give them access to my secure stuff. But then if anything happens, I can revoke that access very quickly and easily, stuff like that. My goals for business. Under social and email, I plan on going to some gun shows and some survival expos maybe and uh, trying to connect up with people. I would like to connect with one person a day or one person a week. I think one person a week is a better is a better goal for me right now since I'm so darn busy all the time. So if any of you guys want to connect with me, that would be a great thing. You just connect with me any way you feel, um, and I will try to get back with you, and we will have a great conversation because I don't want you guys to think that you're just numbers because that's not how I do things. Every person that listens to this, is an important piece of a community. So I am more than willing to spend time talking and connecting with you, and I am more than willing to have you on my podcast if you would like to be. I plan on doing one email marketing campaign. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but you can rest assured that if you're on my email lists, you will get this email. And what it is is it's going to be Only people on my email list will get this campaign, and it will probably be special deals or something like that. So it will be one email marketing campaign this year. Um, I was talking about the gun shows and the survival expos. Uh, I may include meetups um, during each show or expo. So like before or after the expo, meet up with somebody at at one of the local um, one of the local restaurants or or wherever you guys want to meet. Uh, kind of like a Q&A if you want. I don't really know how I'm going to do it, but I want to do a meetup so that members of the community can uh, be part of it. Uh, organization. I want to learn a little bit more about getting things done, IQ tail, and project management. It's just a really great way of organizing. And... Uh, Websites, uh, web improvements, tracking, and SEO. I have two other goals than what I'm listing here, but I left them off because of security reasons. Okay, uh, I want to have 20 satellite sites. Uh, these are actual websites that have actual content, but they redirect back to my site if anybody wants to know further. But it will be real content. It's not going to be something that I just made up with gibberish on it. Um, making the Clever Survivalist mobile look like Prepper Podcast mobile. If you go to my Prepper Podcast site on a mobile device, you'll see how it looks. And then you go, you know, theprepperpodcast.com. And if you go to cleversurvivalist.com on that same phone, it's going to look different. It's not going to look as good and as clean. And, And I'm trying very hard. I mean, I've been trying for quite some time off and on. Um, It's usable right now, but it just doesn't look quite as clean. And I can't figure out what's doing it. So I'm trying to fix that. Um, 
I want to improve my site load time, make it faster for you guys to get to things. Uh, I don't have anything under podcasts and posts except for just continue with what I'm doing. Under income generating, I would like to create a prepper store, an e-commerce site, a place where you can buy stuff. I'd like to make at least three t-shirts for that store that you guys can wear. Um, I want to make an electrical book for preppers. Please let me know if you would buy it if I made it. This is going to have, like, it's going to have um, electrical theory in the front of it. And then throughout the book, it's going to have how does electrical, uh, how does electricity apply to preppers? How can I build this system and build that system? So let me know if you would buy it um, before I start writing it. And if you key in now, you can ask specific questions and I can put those in the book. So that would be really great. You guys would have um, input at the ground level on what's going to go in this book if you want to comment. And just go ahead and comment on this at the prepperpodcast.com slash zero one three i i don't know if this is going to be possible because it turned out to be a really big project bigger than what i thought but i would like to do some encryption software so that you can connect to something from your desktop or have a program on your desktop and you can do Facebook and Google and all this other stuff, but encrypted. It will send it over fully encrypted. Even the most basic encryption takes the NSA over, um, I think, a year to process. Now, obviously, there's more processes going on than one at one time. But your conversation a year later will finally be processed and they will finally be able to know what you're, te- you're what you're saying and they wasted all that time, all that effort and all that energy and <laughs> they realize all you said was your sister's kitten looked cute. And that's all because you went through some encryption software. And then after that I would like to make it mobile. So if there's anybody out there that's listening to this podcast that would like to work with me in making this software, who has the knowledge and the capability to make this software, get a hold of me. And then um, uh, Prepper Plan App. This is another awesome project that I would like to work with somebody on. It's uh, an application that would allow you to plan your preps um, within a budget and within a time. There's a lot involved with this, but it's going to be a really awesome app as well. And that's just a phone app. So if you've got that skill, go ahead and get a hold of me. Uh, I'm thinking about creating a plus membership. This will never be a paid site. The Prepper Podcast and Clever Survivalist will not be paid websites. I will always give you the content that I've always given you. However, this site um, will have a few extras just the extra little videos on how to's and stuff like that that I'm not going to just put out in a post. I will take extra time out to make the quality of the videos a little bit better. Definitely make the content of the videos uh, pretty high. And, um, you know, that would be available to Plus members. I'll give books to people. I'll try to find uh, vendors that are willing to give 15 to 20 percent off something like that to all of the plus members so you just log in with your plus membership and you can go to all these um, you know uh, uh, tactical sites and and seed companies and stuff like that Uh, you can do that and uh, you'll automatically get percents off by going through the site from your plus membership And that's just a few of the things that I have planned for that membership. Uh, Another thing is um, the password security software for my assistant. uh, Because I'm planning on getting, I'm thinking about getting an assistant. So that's the password security software that I was talking about. uh, Getting it for an assistant to raise my security level on the site. And still be able to compound all the help 
And then uh, thinking about doing 10 Google Plus meetups. And all that is is like a group meeting. Yeah, I'm sorry, these are not income generating. The password security software and the Google Plus memberships are the miscellaneous category. The Google Plus meetups, it's essentially just a group, a conference call, essentially. You can do it with video, text, and audio. Um, so that's what a Google Plus meetup is. It's through Google Plus, and it's actually a pretty cool little function, even though I don't like Google Plus. So all in all, that's what I have. And I'm sorry that I went so darn long. I don't know. I went almost an hour long, and I'm sorry about that. But um, now aren't you glad that I cut out all of those other categories? I want to know, have you made your review, and have you made your goals? If you haven't reviewed last year, and you haven't made goals for the future, and I don't mean those crappy resolutions I want you to review last year I want you to make goals for next year and I want you to send those goals to someone I don't care who it can be your brother it can be your wife send your goals for the next year to someone and ask them to keep up with it because it's easier to get things done when you're being held accountable that is all that I have. Go ahead and place uh, any goals that you might have that you want to share with everybody because this is a good way of people you know, listening in. They, like you're reading my stuff or you're listening to my stuff. These are giving you ideas. So if you want to give other people ideas, go ahead and throw those in the comments. Let me know your goals for next year. Uh, I'll definitely... Uh, you know, I'll definitely... Uh, verify those and let those show up on the comments because that's pretty awesome and it will give other people ideas so that is all that i have and from the prepper podcast i would like to say goodbye and have a great year this year in 2014 i hope to uh keep all of you through the year listening to my podcast and I really hope that you guys can spread the word about my podcast and we can grow this community together. Once again, goodbye and have a great week.